So this is my very first unboxing video for those of you who are absolute lovers of the spring summer collections. I am certainly my favorite collection next to maybe fall, fall and spring. Um, yesterday was the preview day for Hermes in South Coast Plaza. They have a new store that's taken over uh, where Tiffany used to be on the lower level next to Nordstrom. It's right across from Chanel. And um, so I was invited to go and check out the new store before it opened. It was a lot of fun. Everybody was pretty well dressed up, um, hors d'oeuvres and champagne. A very celebratory festive event, uh, very um, honored to have been invited. And um, so I will show you a few things that I picked up yesterday. Now you will notice that my hauls are not really what you'll see on other channels. I don't have a big stack of boxes here in front of me. Um, that is because like many of you, I do not have an unlimited budget. I'm actually a professor. So um, you will see that I'm really particular about the things that I want to purchase. And when I don't love something and it's past a return policy, I will also sell it, not as a reseller, usually to fashion file or the real real and throughout different videos i'm certainly going to talk about that as well um, for those of you who may run into the same problem that i have and you're past the return stage and you just really are going to find finding that you're not going to wear something so um i'd rather get the budget back and purchase something that i really like um so that said i'll show you a few pieces i did pick up in the same at the same time uh the same trip to south coast but two different stores obviously being across from one another is super convenient but it's also a little bit dangerous so um i do have a very a surprise at the very end so i'll save this one for last so hermes did hand out little goodie bags this was a sample of three different perfumes so there they are it's a nice little touch at the end um again the event was a lot of fun mostly just honored to be there check out the new store it's absolutely beautiful for those of you who find yourselves traveling to California, Southern California, I'd recommend checking it out. Um, they are, and people ask me this, well, how do you get a quota bag in South Coast? Is it hard? Is it easy compared to like Beverly Hills store? I haven't, I don't have any experience with the Beverly Hills store. I can tell you that it has been relatively difficult for me to get a quota bag out of South Coast. But that said, certainly the relationship with your sales associate plays a big role. Find someone that you really gel with there and your chances, at the end of the day, I have heard from many people do tend to go up. Um, there's also been a very limited supply throughout the world, but certainly at that store, the preview day, they did have a lot of quota bags. They also had a wall full of other bags, which was pretty nice because you'll see one that I picked up that I think is a fantastic everyday bag and it's not, it won't break the bank compared to many others. Um, so we'll start to take a look. So in this mini haul, right? For me, it's a big haul, but I know for many of you who have uh, been watching videos with, again, the giant stacks of bags for me, this was a big one. Um, I did pick up a few ready to wear pieces. I'm going to try them on and I'll show those to you um, here in a few minutes, but I'll show you some of these. Okay. So let's take a look at this first bag. Now my unboxing is not like many others. I don't put the wrapping back on the ribbon back on. Um, Quite honestly, I suck at it. So I'm not going to recreate something that somebody else did. And obviously, as soon as I got home, I wanted to take a look at it and not save it for a video. So for those of you who prefer um, that this already is on, sorry, it's just not how my head works. So this is the Halzon bag, the 25. And I will show you why I love this one. This, not a lot of people are found in this bag. When I mentioned it to a couple of friends who know the collection well, they said, oh, not that one. <laughs> um, this is the Etope color. I love this thing. First of all, if you are used to Chanel or Birkin uh, by Hermes or even the Kelly, they are heavy bags. And maybe you've liked the weight of some of the others like the Evelyn, but it's kind of a bag where you dump everything in and hope for the best, right? Uh, I recently ran into that in my car with a bunch of stuff that dumped out and had problems. So one of many reasons I love this bag, outside pockets. If you love the boy bag like I do, it's a heavy bag. But if you love the boy, one of the most annoying things to me is that there's no outside pockets. The same with the wallet on chain. Great bag. The pocket in the back is pretty much useless. Um, 
the 19 bag as much as I don't really like its structure and I don't enjoy carrying it that much. It's very functional because of the pockets on the outside. To me, uh, that makes a difference. Who doesn't love Birkin and Kelly? Um, again, the same functionality problem to me. We leave our Birkins open and just put things in it, right? Why? Because there's no other place to put things. Um, it's convenience. So this has two pockets on the back, a big pocket in the inside. Two pockets on the front, you can do the same thing. You can fold it over, carry it as a clutch, or as a small bag. This weighs nothing, by the way. I, I would probably say this is in ounces. Um, definitely not close to a pound, like not even close. And of course it has a full strap um, and it does fit complete crossbody. So I will do a video just on this bag in the near future and you will see um, how convenient this crossbody strap is. To me, this is a perfect size. For reference, I'm five foot four, uh, about 115 pounds, and this bag just fits perfect. So they had this yesterday in gold and he taupe um, in this size. And I picked this color because I don't have, I actually don't have either color, but I think it's a really great neutral. Um, summer's coming and I think it was a good select, a good choice. So more on him later. And if you watch my other uh, little set building videos, I do refer to my bags in the male gender, the same as my cars. I know that's very non-traditional. Many of you are wondering what in the heck is she talking about? My cars are male names. My bags are male names. It's just, I don't, I don't know. It's one of my quirks. So the next piece that I picked up yesterday, I'm not really a big bag charm person. Um, I don't really like to decorate my stuff. Uh, but I am definitely a so black person, meaning black hardware with a black bag. So, so black and, and they call it so black in, at, at Chanel and Um, so they did have, I've heard this pronounced a number of different ways. I'm terrible at French. So unless my daughter is here to translate for me, um, who's 11 by the way, and speaks much better than I do. Um, you're going to hear me say things improperly. So please don't copy my pronunciation. This is a little Rodeo charm. What's cool about this guy is that he has crocodile here. So I thought it was pretty cool little um, detailing that I hadn't seen in other pieces before. Will I attach it to um, one of these? One of these days, yes. When I do, I will show you how he looks hanging. Um, I've also seen recently a lot of people putting bracelets on bags and I want to take a look at that and explore that in a different video and see what I have that might look cool on a bag that you might also find kind of interesting. Um, okay. So I did pick up, I will pick them up from over here Two ready to wear pieces. Uh, I also got, um, uh, men's ready to wear for my boyfriend. I love that shirt. I think it, I'll, I'll show it in another video. Uh, it's really sexy. Um, nice fitting cashmere. For those of you that don't have kind of avoided our maze ready to wear because Chanel's a little more fun and funky, I think for ready to wear, um, they have fantastic pricing on cashmere and leather and the way that the cashmere is made, it's been explained to me as two pieces put together and rather than a lined piece, right? It's not lined, right? So it's lined with another set of another piece of cashmere. So we'll explore what that means in greater detail in another video, but essentially it means high quality. They feel really good. Um, and I will show you what these two pieces look like on here in just a few minutes. But for now, these are the two. Now I have to admit when I first saw this dress, I thought this would be hanging to the floor. Again, I'm only five foot four. So I thought this would be hanging on the floor and look terrible on me, but it's actually really cool on. I will show you. Um, I contemplated returning it until I tried it. There was no time yesterday during the preview to try anything, um, but I, I think this is really awesome. And I will show you what this looks like on here in the mirror in a few minutes and how um, I haven't figured out quite how to style it yet, but I will. And this little, Jacket, I think is super cute. I did in the store, try it on. I rolled up the sleeves. Um, you can actually alter this a number of ways or alter the way you wear it a number of ways. I'll probably just leave it closed for a more casual look. Um, or if you pop it open, you can use the little leather strap here to hold the details in place, uh, which is how they had it styled in the store. They did have it in a couple of colors, um, but not in my size. So this is a 34. So is the dress. 
I have found that their um, sizing runs a little bit big compared to Chanel. So for reference, in Chanel, I am a 36 on top and now a 38 on the bottom. Um, so again, for reference, five foot four, about 115 pounds. So um, I will show you in these collections how they're fitting because I have found a lot of variability, but not so much with Hermes, but definitely with Chanel recently, a lot of variability in sizing. Um, the summer collection has been, to me, a disaster with sizing. And I will show you some examples in, in future videos um, where a, a 36, I can't even get it past the middle of my thigh. That is not something that I would have an issue with at all in the past. Uh, and then other pieces where I put on a 40 and it's fitting, and from the exact same collection, I still need a 36 in another piece. So um, the sizing has been off, kind of wonky. And I noticed that in the fall collection as well. And also in cruise, um, I was probably driving my absolutely wonderful, by the way, she's wonderful, um, sales associate at the South Coast Chanel store in Seine. Um, I also have a wonderful partnership and friendship with, uh, with a sales associate in Soho, the Soho store. Um, so I'm fortunate to have two wonderful people to work with and both of them were probably going crazy. Like, you know, we, we got your size for you and you're trying to exchange and get different sizes and they do have a new policy where they can't transfer in. Um, they cannot transfer in until a certain day of the month. So I will get more details and share that with everyone so we can figure this out together. But it does take a number of days before they're allowed to transfer, um, which means if your store didn't order your size, by the time you go to get it, it may be sold out. So that is one of the reasons it doesn't hurt to have an established relationship with more than one store. I know um, the sales associates and even other uh, connoisseurs of the brand will not like that I'm saying that, but I really believe that's true. I think sometimes uh, if something's gonna sell out and you really love it, just tell your sales associate you're going to get it from another store and pick it up because if it's a really sought after item, there's a good chance it's going to be gone. So, um, so just my two cents piece of advice, what I recommend. So I have to admit that this was not on my wish list. Uh, I've heard that it is a quota bag from some people and I've heard that it's not a quota bag from others. Um, so I don't know what the outcome of that's going to be. We'll find out. Um, on my wish list is, an exotic leather, uh, either ostrich, um, crocodile, in black with black hardware or rose gold hardware, a Birkin or a Kelly, preferably a Birkin like 25, very similar to my guy over here. Again, guy, sorry, uh, but similar size, maybe up to a 30 um, or the 25 Kelly. That's, I, I for, for me, a 28 is too big. It just looks too big on my body. So, um, this was offered to me. I did accept it because I want to see if I enjoy it. And again, if you don't, there's plenty of people you can sell your items. I'm not suggesting to buy them for the resale market. We'll get into that in another video. I'm not a big fan of that, but if you end up not liking it, there are people out there that will definitely allow you to trade for something that you like plenty of, of potential buyers out there. So, um, this is, the one I was saving for last. This is Mini Kelly, rose gold hardware. So you'll notice many of my pieces, I love rose gold, and as you can see from my jewelry. So rose gold hardware in the new mauve color, and it is the Mini Kelly. Um, so you might be wondering how many is it? We will do a video on what you can fit in here. Uh, it's not much, to be honest, in my opinion. There's not a whole lot of room in this particular bag. Again, this is my first mini, um, mini Kelly, so I wasn't sure what to expect. The leather, of course, as with all Hermes, right products, right? I mean, it's one of the reasons we love them. The leather is phenomenal. It feels so nice. Um, the bag itself definitely opens up relatively large, very similar to how the Kelly opens. Um, the Kelly 25, I have found that I'm able to put a lot in that bag, a lot more than I thought, but it's not a very well organized bag and neither is this one. Um, as far as a shoulder strap, my sales associate said they will have a belt in this color and when it comes in, she'll let me know and then we will just put it through the side hole here over the top and that that is how we make the mini Kelly into a shoulder bag, so into a crossbody shoulder bag. So more to come on this one. Um, 
as I said, super grateful for the, both the opportunity to be there, but also for an offer, right? For a bag. I don't know if this is going to count as my quota bag for the year. I don't know the answer to that yet. Um, I am hoping again to get some, uh, an exotic and we'll see, uh, if how, you know, how, what I think over the long term of this mini. So, um, I'll keep you posted. And if I do end up, um, selling it to fashion file or the real world, I'll let you know that as well and let you know what I trade it for, because that's what I tend to do is get credit and then trade it for something that I'll really, really love and, and really like. So what's very cool about this is different than the Rose Sakura. It's less pink. It's definitely more of a mauve color. It's more neutral. I think this is easily wearable in fall. In fact, I remember a pair of pants from Miu Miu, maybe four or five years ago that were dark chocolate brown with this color pinstripe. Um, I don't have them anymore. Um, I think they outgrew me. <laughs> I outgrew them. And, uh, but I think they're, they are, this is a good color, both for the spring transitioning into fall. Um, another little quirk I have, I don't like to change out my bags very often. I don't know if I just get lazy or, or what, but I just toss on my bag and go. And so I'll tend to use the same one for a few months at a time. And then I'll come back to it again at a later time and use it again. Um, so I like to have more neutral colors. I do have bags with pops of color, as you can see a few of them. And I have other ones I'll swap out here so you can see different bags in future videos. So I do, um, I do prefer to stick with neutrals mostly because I don't want to be changing my bag out all the time. And that is another reason that I love this guy. <laughs> so uh, even though, even my sales associate kind of looked at me like, you know, are you sure? Uh, not in a bad way, but just um, there were a lot of bags that are not quota bags there. Like, you know, as I said, the Lindy and the Evelyn and others. Um, so I think she was a little surprised that I gravitated towards this one. But as soon as I put it on, I thought it was awesome. And it's about the same price as the Mini Kelly, um, which when you buy it at the boutique, of course, you're going to pay much, much, much less. So the prices that you see on these reseller sites, um, that is not what they cost at the boutique. So this one was about five. This one was about five. And you can right now get this one. I saw it on Fashion File, not this color, but the other, like a light pink color for $27,000. So there's a, a consistent question. Should I buy from a reseller, just get exactly what I want, or should I spend the money to build up a relationship? My theory is this, and we'll get into it in later videos. My theory is this, if you already wanted the pieces, build the relationship and get it for five grand. If you don't like it later on down the road, you can always sell it and get what you like. Um, however, if you're buying only to build the relationship, you'll probably end up spending more money than if you just went and bought what you liked. So I, for me, that's sort of the bottom line um, is what I love these pieces regardless. You definitely. So did it help build my relationship? Definitely. Um, so it was a win-win, but I wouldn't go in and, and just buy a bunch of stuff only to get this bag for me. That doesn't make very good financial sense because again, I am working on a budget here and not an unlimited one. Um, I'm very happy for those who are, but I want to give advice based off of my own experience and what, what I think makes sense. Okay. So now we will get to the Chanel pieces. It said three ready to wear yesterday, a couple on order, two bags, but I will show you one of my didn't pick up yesterday. I just brought it here because I bought it maybe four weeks ago. Um, so personally, I already shared with you that I am a sucker for rose gold hardware. I do personally do not like yellow gold. So I know many of you are like, ah, and that's all you want to buy. Um, first of all, it definitely has better resale value. I totally hear you. Um, for me, it just doesn't go with my skin tone. That's the only reason I don't look at a yellow gold bag and say, Oh my God, I don't like it. It's not that when I don't like it on me. So, um, you'll see very few pieces in my collection that are yellow gold. Um, but I will pick up an, if, if someone were to offer me, um, a gold Birkin with gold hardware, obviously I'm not going to turn that down black Birkin with black heart or with gold hardware. I'm not going to turn that down. Um, but I would much prefer for myself to carry either rose gold or, or black hardware or, um, silver palladium if you're yeah, a Hermes shopper. So this one I picked up a little while ago actually kind of goes nice with my dress and realize it. This, by the way, this dress I purchased at the Soho store. Um, they sent it to me. My associate sent it to me. It's from, I believe it's from cruise. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I believe it's from cruise. I like the belt. I think the little details are pretty cool. Um, I like the color. 
I, I like yellow, I like black, I like a lot of neutrals, so for me it was a good choice. Um, so I'm very happy with it. Sometimes I have to return purchases, particularly if they're remote, right? You just don't know until you see it. Um, the same thing even happens with the local store. They'll send me something that was on my wish list and then I get it and I'm like, uh, I feel really bad, but we don't, we don't have the money to just keep stuff we don't like. And, and really most really good sales associates don't want us to, right? They want us to lower our purchases to actually wear them. So I did pick this up from the South Coast store. This is, um, 22P collection it's yellow black gray I, I don't like minis either you say what does she like uh, I like boy bags uh, I'm sort of tolerating the classic flap right now um, the mini is very cool it looks really cute but it's the back not having room for a phone to me I, I just I don't like it it just makes the bag much much less functional so I have to make an exception to buy a mini um, and I know many of you are cringing right now, and I don't care if it's square or rectangular. For me, it's an exception. I love this bag because of the tweed, and I do. Another thing I love is tweed. If you were to give me tweed with rose gold hardware, oh my God, that would be, I would be in heaven for days, maybe longer. So this one does have gold hardware, but it's not bright gold. It's light gold hardware, um, and I will show you what this one looks like on, but it's just typical mini. Other than the tweed, it's not any, it's not an atypical mini at all. I just personally love, um, I can deal with the light gold hardware and I love that it's tweed. And again, tweed is just one of my things. Um, I like it, I like that it adds texture, particularly if it's in neutrals. This one, black, gray, and yellow certainly is a neutral. Um, I'm not gonna unwrap it today. I'll probably do a, a more detailed review of this bag on another video, but you can see the color. Pretty awesome. Um, again, I think personally, I think it's a neutral bag. Is it going to hold a lot? No, certainly I'll have to pare down. Um, maybe that's another reason that I'm not a big fan of uh, of the mini or even the wallet on chain so much anymore. Is that again, like I said, I don't really like swapping my bags out. So if I have to downsize, upsize, downsize, upsize, it just gets kind of annoying. It's another 20, 30 minutes in the day that with a lot of work, I just tend to not have, and so. Um, so yeah, I, this is a recent one. I'm happy with him. I really like it a lot and the color is beautiful. And hopefully you can see it really well in the lighting because it, it actually really does pop. It's neutral, but it does pop. And then I'll show you one more here. So diehards will not think this is a cool bag. I think this is really cool. I have it in black um, that I got at the... Um, 59th Street Bloomingdale store. Also have a wonderful relationship with the sales associate there. I used to live in New York, so I do have those established relationships, but living in California, um, you know, reestablish a new one. Um, so I have this in black. That's the reason I got this in light denim because I know how much I love it. So this little bucket bag, there is a smaller version. It will probably hold your AirPods if you're lucky, maybe very small this one here is very cool for me i will show you the black one in another video and we can take a look at these so this one's 22p bucket bag um actually holds a lot it's not very well organized it's mostly exactly as it says just a bucket bag there's no zipper compartment at all on my black bag the chain started unraveling from the leather a little bit um there's a little button here on the clasp, so push down and pull to release and you shouldn't wind up with that issue. But if you do, I haven't figured out how to do it myself. I need to work on it. You twist the chain. For those of you that get stuck and also have your leather come detached from the chain, we'll do a video just on that. I will mess one of mine up and then fix it. But I just wanna make sure I'm really clear on how to fix it before I do it. So um, this bag's pretty cool. I like it, again, it has gold hardware. So would that be my first choice? I would love this in rose gold, but they're not gonna make it. Um, it just has Chanel written in different fonts, different colors. It's a nice light spring bag. Pretty soon I'm gonna probably need to ditch the black for a few months. And um, I think it's a nice alternative. Is it just denim fabric? Yes. Is it a lot of money for just denim fabric? Yes. It's 4,000 for this bucket bag. Um, if I had not tried it already and knew that I love it, I would have laughed because uh, it's a little bit absurd, right? For um, cloth. When you have this, if you're the type of person like me that just wants an organized small bag, you can just grab and go. 
I think it's going to pay for itself very quickly, um, mostly because of the amount of times I'll be, of how much I'll be able to use this bag compared to many others. Um, so I think this is a good choice. I know this is not going to be for everyone. Um, maybe not for most of you, but I just wanted to show you because I did pick it up yesterday when I was um, there getting some other pieces. Okay, so that is what I picked up in small leather goods, like our little charm guy, and also in handbags. But um, last three for this unboxing are the ready to wear from Chanel that I picked up. So remember I said I'm a true 36, pretty very consistently. In this pair of shorts, which I will try on here in just a few, um, this 22P also, I am definitely a true 38. Um, however, there's a little bit of extra room in the back. Um, I know if it gets all, so they wanted to alter it as Chanel, right? Of course, I mean, it's super kind of them to want to do, make it fit perfect. I know that a little bit of altering for me is going to feel too tight. So I left it larger. You can even see the shape of it kind of bows out a little bit in the back. So I think it's by design. If it were just the tweed on these shorts, there is no way that I would have gone for this. Not because they, not, not because there's anything wrong with them. Just um, it would have looked kind of generic to me, I guess, uh, very similar to um, non-luxurious designers, right? Like maybe Alice, I have a pair of shorts, Alice and Olivia, that are tweed shorts. So I wanted something that would be different. And here's what makes it different for me. The denim on the bottom. Um, the jacket that matches this, the crop jacket is only tweed, which to me is kind of a bummer. Um, they had a really big oversized jacket that does have a lot of denim where the tweed actually became the complementary fabric, but it's really, really oversized. I might still try it just to see how it looks because I kind of like that style, but you can see the denim, I think looks pretty cool. Um, they look great on. Again, they run, you know, they're high waisted. They do run to me a little bit, tiny bit big. Um, what I love about these shorts though, is the weight of the tweed. So, um, I like a very lightweight tweed. I do not like my tweed to be heavy when I cross my arms or I'm working, um, holding sessions, zoom sessions and so on. I don't want to feel restricted. I don't like things super tight on my neck and I don't like things really tight underneath my arms. Um, I love it when a tweed is super lightweight. These are lightweight. If they are, it has light lining. If it's a heavy tweed, you will generally not see it in my closet. There's with very few exceptions, which I'll try some on in the future in different videos and see what you all think and what you love or don't love about tweed. So this was one piece. Uh, Chanel finally got their little fabric bags back. For those of you who were shopping for a little while and didn't see them, I think my understanding is they were actually going to stop selling pieces with these little bags um, and just use tissue paper. And there was a lot of pushback about that. Uh, that would just have been so beneath the brand to me. You don't spend $2,000 for something and want a piece of tissue paper, right? So I don't know if they made it, if, if they had these laying around or if they actually made a decision to bring them back. I'm hoping it's the latter. It's a small thing, but to me, it's kind of a big deal. And I know to many, even of the associates, I heard kind of a little bit of grumbling about it and certainly from other um, Chanel fans. So these little pouches save me when I travel, by the way. I know you can't really see through them, so they're not ideal from that perspective compared to like a travel bag, but they are awesome for traveling. You can stuff socks in one, underwear in one. Um, so they come with me a lot on little trips or big trips. Okay, this top, again, I'm a true 36 on top maybe 36 38 on the bottom this is a 36 i will show you what it looks like on um it looks super super cute it is a little bit tight in the arms nothing a little bit of gym time should it fix um the fabric feels fantastic i think i had missed it this is 22 cruise actually i did i had missed it from a prior trip if I had seen it, I probably would have picked it up. That's one downside to really, for a while, I wasn't going into the boutique at all. I was just shopping um, via text message. And so you miss pieces like this. I, again, I love lightweight pieces. This one's very lightweight. Um, and it is a 36. It's called just the black and white top. And this is 2,700 for those of you keeping track of what you might be interested in purchasing. Um, it feels really good. I will check out the fabric here and let you know. It's lightweight, 
little bit of detailing at the bottom. It is, it feels like cashmere. It is, it's 100% cashmere and it looks great on and it's a little bit cropped. So beginning of the day, it's great. By the end of the day, we've eaten a little too much, maybe not so much, but certainly for the first half of the day, I think it's really cute. And I'll show you what that one looks like in just a bit. And then I did pick this up. Um, I was debating between a 34 and 36 because it runs a little bit large. So there's two colors to this, um, this top. There is the third, there is white and there is navy blue. The white has navy blue detailing. The blue has white detailing. I'm going to try them both at home. Um, so a 36 was ordered. This is also a 36. I know you're thinking, what in the heck? It looks like a sack. It does not look like a sack on. In fact, it's open on the side. It ties in the front or back. It looks really cute. I actually think it's a great versatile piece. Um, I try to stay away from things that I would consider to be more traditional. So you won't see me buying a lot of black tops or a lot of very traditional pieces because I want, but I can get that from non expensive designers that are not super expensive. I want to have something fun, um, something more exciting, something I want to wear. Um, and believe it or not, this usually would not fit my litmus test, but this time I really liked it a lot and I really liked it on. So let's get to trying these pieces on. So I had a little bit of a mirror glitch. I'll fix it in subsequent videos. We can use the mirror um, to look at some of these pieces. Maybe you can kind of see it in the mirror. I'm not really sure, but, uh, but I'll get it fixed. Just um, bear with me as I try to figure this whole thing out. So these are the shorts. High-waisted. Um, again, you can see what I'm referring to in the back with this little gap here, right, at the waist. This little gap. I think if I were to get that fixed and pulled in, it's going to be too tight, too uncomfortable. So I'm not going to do that. But I think the fit's really good. Um, they do rub a little bit in the leg, um, but I think it's gonna work itself out with time as the fabric loosens up a little bit. This top, I would never have paired with this, probably just white, a white tee. Um, the, the South Coast stylist paired this, and I think it's pretty cute this way. So one option is to tie it in the front. I don't know if I'll wear it with these shorts like they had it, but maybe. Um, so this in the front allows like this little tail in the back, which is pretty cute, or you can tie it in the back. So when it's in the back, then it's really kind of the same design. There's just less, less here. One thing I like about this is the space on the side. I think it looks pretty cute. Um, you, know, you can wear some really cute bandeau underneath it if you wanted, give it a little bit of sense of different kind of style. So I like it. Again, it comes in white, comes in navy. I think they're both good choices. And um, this is a 36. And like I said, I'm a true 36. So I think it fits well. The fabric's soft. It's, it's substantial. You're not feeling like you got a cheap shirt, right, for the price. But it's substantial, but it's also still soft and very easy to move in. So for me, those are two ideal things that I'm looking for when I'm buying ready to wear, because otherwise I'm going to want to get rid of it and get something new. And it's just too much money to do to be doing that. So um, let me show you the black shirt. So I'll be right back. So this is the little black top that I was showing you. Um, could I have gone with a 38? Yeah, possibly. It's a little bit tight in the arms. It may have been a good thing to size up a little. And I may still. Um, but the 36 fits well in terms of how it looks. I think it looks really good. It's, a, it's obviously with a high-waisted short. I would never put these two together, but just to show you um, what I picked up yesterday, with a high-waisted short, it doesn't have any belly showing, but with any sort of mid or low, of course, you're gonna have more. Um, I like the neckline a lot. I think the neckline is really uh, sexy and cute and allows you to show off any jewelry that you're wearing, um, have a couple of little pieces of ink that I like to show. So um, from the back, this is how this one looks. And overall, I think it's a pretty cute piece. So the only question for me is, do I size up and get a 38 or do I keep the 36? If it, fabric gave, it would definitely be a 36. If I can get in more gym time, it will definitely be a 36. So the question often becomes, do I use it as motivation to go back in the gym or do I just buy the size that truly would probably be more comfortable now? Eh, we'll see. Okay, last and final pieces I've picked up from the ready to wear from yesterday. Remember I was saying that I thought this dress would be really long and really ugly. I think it's very cute. Now it's from fall. Um, I love cashmere as I was saying. I love fall. So together I think these are really nice. The shape of it's really nice. It feels really good. The shape of the arms is really nice. Uh, this is how the back fits. And um, 
I don't know, overall to me, I think it's really cute and definitely love it. Um, this is the jacket. I'm not going to wear it with it. I know the sales associate said they would look cute together. To me, it's just too much. Probably put this with black jeans or something shredded, shredded jeans or shredded shorts. But you can just get a sense of what the jacket's shape is like. So you can connect it here, the pieces here with the leather, um, or just leave it like this, or even leave it close. Well, it doesn't close very well, but leave it close, leave it open. Um, it does have a little zipper here. Um, it's a more conservative piece, right? Our maze is more conservative than the Chanel pieces, but I still think it's really cute. Uh, I love the feel of this. If you felt this jacket, you would understand why I love it so much. And um, these are not functional pockets on the top, by the way, but they are on the side. So you do have a pocket here. I just think it's a great throw-on jacket that will dress up jeans or dress up shorts, um, particularly in transition seasons. It's a nice neutral in, in spite of the fact that I think it's pretty sure it's from the fall collection. I did not look at their ready to wear in the fall, so I, I don't have that 100% uh, certainty, but given the color palette, I, I would think that would be the case. And again, this dress, I was very surprised, but I, I like it a lot. So um, I hope that you enjoyed my first video of what I picked up. Again, our May's opening, um, pre-opening pre uh, special day that they had, special event and some of the new spring uh, and summer collection of Chanel and the past from Hermes. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, if you're interested in new content, please subscribe. I would love to hear your comments or your questions. I, if I don't know the answer, I'll try to find it and I'll respond back to you. And I'm looking forward to your thoughts on these pieces as well. Whether you love it or you hate it, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. So please let's have an awesome dialogue and enjoy the process. And uh, we'll get to know each other through this as well, right? What, what we like, what we don't like. I'm sure many of your names will become familiar as we, um, as we progress in this little journey. So again, my name is Danny B and this is Channeling Luxury. Thank you for watching and I hope you all enjoyed this video.